Hey, uh, good afternoon, eh? Um, hope everybody had a good Canada Day. I'm here on my vacation day still. I'm gonna enjoy the long weekend. I just wanted to show you the latest of my uh, Goldfinch piece and Procreate. I am uh, just about finished and I just want to go over a couple things. Um, maybe some finishing details I'd like to do, I'd like to cover. Uh, I want to show you how, uh, you know, I was able to finish this side, see? I was able to do a few more tweaks here and work on some of this here. Today maybe I'll just do a little bit more detail here and I'm thinking about putting a texture, kind of a texture a layer, overlay or something because I feel like I want to put it on some kind of cotton canvas so it looks like it's um, painted on canvas give it some texture uh, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do that uh, this morning or this afternoon and maybe just show you how how I'm gonna I could do that uh, and if you look at it now you'll see it's a little bit oversaturated see there's lots of uh, vibrant colors it's really saturated in terms of color and pops right now and uh, for me I just want to give it a little bit of maybe some a little bit of an atmosphere we call it atmosphere perspective and uh, that's just by going and doing layers of texture like this so if you can see if I so zoom in close up and um, I, I did a layer here just airbrush or just brushing over with a texture brush and you can see a bit of a overlay. Um, I also used a cotton type of brush it says and uh, what that one does is give it a little bit of um, different uh, color saturated mask so you can see now that it's not as intense the it's not intense as intense in like terms of color um, I kind of like this actually if you if I was to hide it for example um, you can see the difference a little bit right it changes the color just slightly to uh, more I don't know Bateman-esque I would say I call it Bateman-esque because that's what Robert Bateman does he saturates he sponges his paintings over kind of desaturates it a little bit um, I like it now because it's not as intense but um, I can show you how I did that by um, just going over making a layer like this I made a new layer I'm taking the brush I'm gonna hide this one actually let me hide I've hide okay I hid that one and this one notice how notice how intense it is the colors right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a brush kinda like this one's got textures this one's called cotton this one's like clay and then you know I could take any kind of texture really um, experiment but I'm, I, I went with clay you can see that and then um, I took like a lighter a lighter brush um, maybe a light I went to a little bit of a yellow hue more like an outside sun color um, sat over sat you know desaturated color and then what happens is you could take that brush and then you can resize it and then make sure you're on that layer see and then I just uh, brush over it like this you can see like that um, you can go on all the layers in here all the areas that you want and then go over this guy and go maybe bigger like that over on like that this is the best this is the best because <laughs> digital obviously you, you paint over like this and then and um, you can't really do this and on a real painting because you just destroy it right but 
I'm just gonna leave this guy a little bit and just go ever so lightly. I'm gonna reduce the opacity here, see? And I'm just gonna go lightly over him. Let's go a little bit bigger. Just go a little bit lightly over him, like that. Okay, and then what I do, oh, let me cover some of this down here. Down here, okay, then I take this and I can, it's just like Photoshop. Uh, I can reduce the opacity down here like this, see? It reduces it. But the color, you see the color is still there. It's really bright and it kind of looks, still kind of looks messed up because uh, although it does look like it, there's texture on it and like you're painted on a canvas, um, it, it looks like a really hard, rough canvas. Um, I don't like that too much. So what I like to do, what I like to do is I like to go into here in my layers, and then you can actually play with the um, uh, the opac the different filters. They call it. I like to go in and try different filters like soft light, hard light, vivid, linear, vivid. Look at vivid. It changes the greens. Look what it does to the greens there. Check check that out see you go in here like that and then look hard light and then vivid just really brightens everything out hard mix difference difference takes out all the color exclusion takes out all the color pretty much and hue and saturate and then color luminosity what does what did I do here on this one? Let me just look at this hue. Okay, so I I picked hue. So let's let's go with let's go with hue like that, and then uh, make sure this one is on, and then do hue, and then deselect hue. Is there much of difference? No. A little brighter. Let me put this on top. Let's see what happens. So I like to just play with textures and, and see what what the results will be um, I like this I like it because it's not so saturated the colors this makes for a great piece I think yeah just like that can you see the whole thing I think I think you can see the whole thing here um, yeah so I think I'm gonna leave it um, like this with the desaturated um, colors I like it and it's not as intense my eye still flows up here and I can still see the bird you know and there's no distraction anywhere there there's good movement okay so some tricks that I did with the uh, uh, while I was painting this I got kind of tired of making leaves and stuff so there's some tricks that I did. So I took, I took this guy here, okay, and I copied him. For example, I copied him, and I duplicated him, and he's down here. And no, nobody's, in, nobody will notice. But if you can see this one, this guy here, and let me cancel here and here, it it is the same as this guy. See this guy and this guy. I just enlarged it. And I've I've tweaked the the buds, and I changed the color so that there's reflective light. So another thing about reflected light, right? When light comes passes through an object, it bounces off other objects, and then it causes um, those objects to have a ref what what you call reflected light. So in, in terms of this, you'd say uh, it's bouncing through the the flowers, which are kind of pinkish. And then it, and then it, 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 sorry, the light goes through the flowers and then bounces back off. And I put slight pinkish inside the leaves, so there's, it looks like there's like a bit of a translucent effect, right? Um, there, and then there's also shadows you have to play, and keep in, in mind of that are important. So if the sun is coming down, the light is coming down this way, obviously, because you could see. There's lots of light coming down on the on the bird, so there's light coming down on top and on top on top of the leaves here. 
and then you can see there's shadow underneath so there's cast shadow underneath these this this area here is very important to be darked darkened a little bit under here because these leaves are shadowed causing a shadow underneath and then here um, here look at this de little detail see I added this this shadow here because these guys I wanted to show that these guys were on top of the of this leaf and this leaf was underneath so you, you do a cast shadow kind of right here like that cast shadow and then you can see that shadow here right here you see that if I zoom in I take that shadow and then you see it's a cast shadow I know okay so how, how did I do that oh man I don't know I think I'm it's it's limiting me to layers so I can't do any more layers but let's see if I can uh, just do one to show you how I did this so one okay I'm gonna get away with it okay so shadow so I'm gonna hide this one and then what I did was all I did was I used any any um, uh, paintbrush but I love my 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 um, my regular oil and or Zorn so I use my Zorn or any of these guys for example it doesn't matter and then I go with the dark I picked so I can pick out one of these darks I picked out one of these darks here maybe the shadow and then I went a little bit darker I added a little bit more green to it okay and then I went I went in and it brushed just like a slight shadow okay maybe it needs to go a little darker here just a slight shadow so say this guy this guy's uh, curving like that okay and then there's like a big bud so let's do a look slightly big bud and then there's another shadow here coming here this way and then maybe a slight bud here on the edge right and then I can erase this here like this uh, let me use the other brush erase this okay and then what I do is I could um, <clears throat> I could either smudge it like this you can either smudge it, right? And smudge it down here like this, like this. Or you can go here into the filters, do a Gaussian blur, and then look, just see this Gaussian blur, uh, slide to adjust. So I slide, and then I gotta be careful not to do it too much or it'll disappear. And I just slide slightly like this, right? back and forth this way right and then I zoom out like this just to kind of see what it looks like and I gotta be careful now so I'm looking at this overall piece and I'm and I'm, my eyes wandering up this the traveling up the leaf and I gotta be careful now so there's certain objects I don't want to distract from right I want this all to be uniform I want this all to be um, an easy eye movement I don't want anything to stop my eye from continuing on up to the leaf, uh, up to the branch and looking at the goldfinch. So this color here is very intense, right? You see how dark that is? My eye just keeps drawing. My eye just pops and it just keeps going down to, to there. Okay, now although I do like how it's shadowed like this, maybe blurred like this, and then I'll erase it a little bit. Wait a minute, that's too hard. I need to do a soft brush. So find a soft brush and then go Let's see Josie's favorites. This one's okay. And then find a soft brush and then erase the edge here like this. Because that won't that doesn't make any sense. Having outside the edge. And then and then it's easy as just going in here and then you lower the opacity. So you see you can increase the opacity, lower it. And then you can actually add, um, you know, f layer filters, whatnot, darken, multiply. So I like uh, I like multiply when it comes to shadows and cast shadows. And then what happens is it kind of bleeds into the leaf, that shadow color. And then that's how that's how you do cast shadows. See like that. 
Although I don't want too much of it. It's still a little bit brighter. It's still look coming out at me too much, but I just go a little bit lighter like that. There. Now my eye's not drawn to it, but I still have that shadow. And it kind of looks like these guys here are on top. Yeah. And then the other one is uh, all important. All the shadow underneath the, the branch that carries all the way around because the light is coming down. So there's that, that shadow needs to be there. Right? Uh, I'm going to hide this guy and get rid of him. I like my old shadow the way I did it. Just like that. And then... And then you can see, you can see the difference here. See the, of the the branch. If you look at the branch, and then there's that shadow of the branch. You see how how it just pops. Without the shadow, um, the branch for me kind of get lo kind of gets lost, right? If I add the shadow, the cast shadow of the branch, now suddenly all, all these elements are popping, right? kind of pops more and it looks more natural right yeah so that's what I did with the shadow on the on the branch and then I added some texture in the background here different color texture there's all these layers there's so many layers like you can see uh, you can see the layers of the like some flowers I that show up even just hiding in behind in the back there, see? You can see with flower, without flower, what does that look like? You know? <laughs> I kind of like with the... I like adding that touch there with the flowers. You have like a group and then another group and then another group. So there's like pattern, a slight pattern maybe. Uh, I don't know, I like that. And then And then there's the background. You can't even really see but but it, it is important to add that I just duplicate you just duplicate parts that you've already drawn and then you put them in the background fade it out uh, there's some cleanup cleanup I want to do here let's see so I see I can see uh, let's see let's look at this bud for example um, where where's this shot this this thing doesn't look like a shadow at all there's some looks like a mistake so I'm, I'm just gonna go in and maybe uh, clean some of those edges up I'm gonna use my Zorn and then maybe just go small and then just clean some of these edges up hold on oh we're on the wrong layer this layer look at that just clean it up just go smaller So yeah, the last part of the detail of all these, every painting is just really going in and doing final touch-ups touch and making sure, you know, it looks, it makes sense. You clean up, clean up all your edges, clean up any loose garbage or junk anywhere on your painting. Um, yeah. Look, look at anything that's kind of off or makes your eye go off. Oh, look, see, the, look, I even added the shadow in here. You see the shadow? So this leaf comes over. This leaf comes over the branch, and then I added a little bit of extra shadow under there. That makes sense. And then here as well. So that makes sense. Shadows are important when you're when you're going when you're doing a piece. So you want to make create depth depth and stuff and everything has to make sense and so yeah I wanted to show this show you guys my progress and if you want one one copy let me know I'll give you a copy um, a digital form let's find out how big it is I think it is settings it's 15 by 8 so kind of a weird format I guess uh, 15 by almost by 9 um, so I would say yeah it's more long elongated and you'd have to get like um I would do a matte finish on this 
I'd do like a mat, put a nice border mat, and then a nice, maybe dark, uh, dark print um, picture frame around it. 15 by 9 is pretty good. It's a good size. That's like, what's that? That's like the size of a. So this one is 9 by 12. It's a 9 by 12, and that's even bigger than your watercolor book. So 15 by 9. Yeah, that's going to be a good piece to print. To print, I think it should turn out really good. Yep. So that's that is my goldfinch. My goldfinch. And that's it. I wanted to show you today. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hello.